Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson with uh, the Raw Life Health Show, and I'm so excited about my guest. I wrote this book many years ago, The Raw Life, and at the time, I was just trying to find people that were eating a raw food diet for a long time, and that was like 20 years ago, and one of the people I interviewed in that book uh, had already been eating a raw vegan diet for a long time. His name was Tim Trader, and he's going to be on the show today. He's still doing raw vegan, and I'm so excited after all these years to to have him on the show and just get an update on his life and what he's doing and what he's teaching. So everybody, here he is, uh, Dr. Tim Trader. Hello, Tim, how you doing? Hey, Paul, I'm doing great, how about you? Oh, I'm doing great and I'm so excited. I've been interviewing people that have been uh, in my book a long time ago and uh, you are always an inspiration to me. I had a picture when I got into this, I was always into fitness and at the time, most of the raw vegans I knew were uh, tall, skinny people, and you and Doug were uh, pretty fit. Uh, and I had a, I literally had a picture of you and Doug uh, mm -hmm. on my wall to just inspire me because oh, I was always into fitness. And here we are all these years later, and I'm so glad to know, know that you're still doing this and you're still thriving, and, uh, but it's been ups and downs. So why don't you first introduce yourself to those people that don't know you, and then we'll get into uh, some uh, questions of currently what what's going on in your life okay um gee uh i i have a doctorate in naturopathy and a phd in nutrition and hmm, uh mainly i take care of people i don't i'm not out there a whole lot because i take care of people uh i get the the people who have been through everything else and they haven't found answers. And so I'm a bit of a detective. I dig and dig and we find solutions. We find the causes, not just something that relieves the symptoms, but we find the cause and we can turn that around. Sometimes it's very simple, but a lot of times it's not. And so, that's pretty much what I do. I have just started doing some writing. Uh, I have a website up. Uh, is it Re uh, recoverhealth.info? And it's got two articles on it. I'm hoping to put in a hundred articles, and so people can see what they have a problem with and give some answers. So. Great. I'm going to put that link below the video. I noticed a lot of uh, things you, you want to talk about and you desire to talk about. And I think the last time we spoke, you said you're currently working on, besides your website articles, you're also working on some uh, books and things like this, correct? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Some things well, that need to be said and nobody's saying them. Now, why is that? I mean, because there are people out there, not many, but there are people that have the knowledge that you have about the diet and health. So why is nobody saying some of these things? You know, that's a good question. Uh, I think some of the people are stumbling on some of the, the new things that are coming up and they don't have answers. Uh, science gives us a lot of answers and uh, we can go on, but it takes a little experience, I think. And I'm the guy that people go to when there's a really serious problem. So I guess that's why I, I have a little bit more experience in that. Yeah, I'm looking at the book there. There it goes. There's you and Doug. So uh, I recently interviewed Doug here. So tell me this. So how long uh, are you on a, currently on a vegan diet or a 100% raw vegan diet? 100% raw plant-based, not, not exclusive plant, raw diet. Okay, and how long have you been doing that 100%? Uh, September will be 32 years. 32 years. And uh, what, uh, I wanna get into some of the things you've learned, but what have been the challenges over the years with eating 100% raw vegan, or if there are any, have you run into? Uh, you know, I usually get in my way like everybody else. Uh, I've tried it all. I've done the all fruit, the all sweet fruit. Uh, I've been no uh, 
added fat. I've, I've gone really low calorie and gone high calorie. I've gone through a lot and some of the things didn't work out. Uh, no added fat kind of did some damage. Uh, I listened to some people about B12 and, you know, that we didn't need it. I mean, the studies did show that, you know, we make in the colon B12 via the microbiome there, but we can't absorb it from the colon. So uh, I got a little trouble with being uh, B12 deficient. Uh, cause a little nerve damage, but uh, now I do pretty good. Uh, but those have been pretty much the challenges. Like I said, I get in my own way. Uh, and hopefully my mistakes will keep others from having the same problems. Sure. And over the years, have you been diagnosed with any medical conditions at all? Oh, <laughs> all my life? <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess before you got into this and since you've been in this, anything new or since you got into this, did it clear up everything? I don't know about clearing up everything. Uh, I had asthma and allergies. Um, and in October, I will have been 32 years without an asthma attack. Um, when I was in med school, uh, one of my professors, a doctor, said people with my kind of asthma didn't live past 30. Well, I'm 62. I'm going to be 62 in September. I think I'm doing pretty good there. Uh, I started eating the foods I was allergic to, at least the ones that were important. Uh, I, I love watermelon. When I was 18 years old, Watermelon closed my throat shut. And good thing I had a, a fast acting father who took care of me real quick and we were fine. But I hadn't had watermelon since then. But going on the raw diet, I could eat watermelon and I could eat all I wanted. I could eat oranges that I couldn't do before. There's so much. Uh, I had uh, uh, a whole lot of problems uh, before I went raw. And a lot of them, uh, I don't know about disappear, but they sure kind of hid away. And uh, I keep up on those things because I want to make sure that there's no problems coming up. But so far, I'm doing pretty good. Sure. And so what is your current diet like in terms of, I know you're raw vegan, but you, you mentioned fats and high sugar foods. And how often do you eat and, and your sleep schedule? And, and how does that all work? What, what are you currently doing? Uh, let's see. Uh, mornings are usually an all fruit breakfast. Uh, lunch is fruit with some greens. And dinner is a big salad uh, with a little dressing, a little, little bit of a berry dressing with some nuts and seeds usually in it. Um, I, I eat about uh, three pounds of greens a day as well as the fruit, but the fruit is my main calorie content that I eat. So I, I think uh, pretty good um, because of my exercise that I do. Uh, and you know, uh, I, I do calisthenics in the morning before breakfast and I do weightlifting before lunch and I run before dinner and uh, stretch after the run, do a little balance work. Uh, and because of, of that, uh, I get to 
up my calories a little bit. And that means more nutrition. So um, I think that sleep is very important. And I try to get eight hours, not always happening. Uh, when the sun comes up, I don't care how tired I am. My body wants to get up and get going. Uh, so uh, let's see. Uh, I also meditate. Uh, don't do a whole lot, but every day. Breathing, uh, meditation at one point, and then a total relaxation meditation later in the day. Especially when, when I've got so many things going on, relaxing meditation, even just 10, 15 minutes a day, really resets my brain and my body and allows me to function a lot better. So um, I try to get a little sun. And so my vitamin D is good. And uh, anything else you can think of? Do you take any supplements? I do. Uh, not, not too many, but uh, I take a B12. And uh, I usually tell most people to test. And if they are deficient, I suggest that they do take some. Uh, and But the other stuff is just something that I test a lot of things. The, the work that I do is to find answers. I test. I don't guess. I find out. And so I do a little bit. I find that maybe a little bit now and then this is not working. So I make sure that that's up. I try to always do it with food first. Always do it with food. And food 99.9% .9 of the time puts you, you if you're not quite getting something, just up one, one thing, maybe some kale or maybe uh, some mango. And you get a good, much better balance that way. When you say you test, you're talking about blood test? Blood, urine, uh, all the all the medical tests, yes. Okay. Okay. And I I don't just do what a lot of the uh, doctors do. And you see people say, "Well, I got my test done," and and yeah, usually it's a comprehensive metabolic panel, and they tell you about protein, and they tell you about potassium and and sodium. I go a lot deeper. I, I break down the uh, fatty acids and the proteins into amino acids and uh, how things are working. I do a lot, I do a lot of stool tests uh, because stool tests uh, tell us about the microbiome. And as it's been said that all disease starts in the gut. And that's very important. And because we have chemicals and antibiotics and preservatives and stuff in people's food, it's something that we need to check. And so it, it really pays off to find problems. Sure. And uh, how many calories would you say you eat on, uh, on the average day? Uh, sometimes I, I eat. Uh, 2,700 calories, uh, but when I'm working out really, really heavy, I can go much higher than that to uh, 3,500 calories, maybe even more. Okay, and how tall are you and how much do you weigh? Uh, I'm five foot nine and a half, and I weigh 156 pounds. Okay. Okay, and uh, do you fast at all? I do. I believe fasting is very important. Uh, and uh, I don't do it on 
a schedule. I do it on a need. If something is not quite right, uh, then I fast. And, uh, I try to live health-wise as if I, so I don't need to fast. So fasting is, is a nice thing, but it is not something that, that I try to make sure is part of my life. It just happens to be part of my life. Sure, sure. All right. So what is some, there are two, I find there are two groups of people when it comes to the raw food diet. There's the sick people that have tried just about everything. And then they come to somebody like you and you start improving their health and their diet and so on to, to work on their condition. But then there are the other people that they haven't been diagnosed with something. They just want to try to find a better diet or a better way to live. So I'm not talking about the people that have a particular illness, because I know those are specific according to what's going on with their situation. But for those people that are out there today that are just trying to eat raw vegan to prevent disease and be as healthy as possible, what are some common mistakes you, you're aware of that people are making today? <laughs> um, probably the number one is under calorie. We come from a Western diet and go into uh, raw food. And we're used to things like a McDonald's Big Mac. You know, yeah. But the thing is, it takes nine medium oranges to equal the same calorie content of that Big Mac. Whole lot more volume. A lot more fiber, a whole lot more water. So yeah, it, it, we have small stomachs compared to what you might find in nature or somebody eating our way of eating. And so sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to make sure you're getting enough. The first year, most people have no problem. They have a little extra weight, they lose the weight, everything is good. And then we see it again and again, things start to fail. And it's literally because of uh, not getting enough calories. So that's gotta be the first thing. Um, another thing is I see that people don't plan ahead. And they get into a spot where they're really hungry and then they don't have any food. That's when things usually call you that you wouldn't normally eat. And so that's probably one of the things that I really recommend that people plan ahead. If you're going somewhere, make sure you have a little something with you. Doesn't mean that you have to eat it. But if you have it with you, you're not going to go hungry. Or do uh, something like eat before. Uh, I've done that all the, a lot of times. There was this raw food restaurant that I went to, but I knew that it was really expensive, and gourmet, and they wouldn't have much. I filled up before I even went so I could enjoy the food and not worry about being hungry. So things like that, uh, people do a lot. Um, another thing is that they think that the raw food diet will take care of everything. Uh, and so they become couch fruit and they don't exercise. And then they usually have problems eating a lot of fruit. Well, sometimes you need to exercise and look for the other things of life, you know, uh, good sleep, uh, low stress, things like that really make a difference. 
So those are probably the top three that I see. Sure. <clears throat> and do you think a raw food diet is, is for everyone? Uh, for us, yes. For the, the human body, yes. I mean, everybody says this, you know, that humans are the only animals on the planet that eat cooked food. That and they're domestic uh, animals. Um, but there are things like social situations. Uh, some people, their whole job is being social and they find it really hard. I personally emphasize getting as much raw in as you can. But some people just with our society have problems with that. But I usually find that if you get a little bit more in and then a little bit more in, I usually get people coming back to me and say, what's next? Now I know you are caught. You want the help. You know, you see it build. And then when you get to 100% of all raw diets, all of a sudden, everything changes. The energy changes, your, your thoughts and your, your, your cognitive situation just open right up and it becomes a whole different thing. So yeah, 100% works. But you know what? I'm not the one on your path. So you do as much as you can and maybe you'll do a little bit more later, maybe you won't. But it all works. And you know what? Getting people off of animal products and getting people off of processed, ultra processed foods makes the difference in their life all by itself. Sure. And uh, for yourself, when you eat uh, your food, uh, how much of a percentage would you say is uh, from the store versus maybe growing it yourself? We have a small place here, so, uh, and it snows in the winter time and it gets very cold. So it's kind of hard to grow all the time. But a lot of our greens and stuff uh, come from the garden. Uh, a lot of our fruit uh, is store-bought. Um, is that optimal? No. Nah. Uh, I'd love to have a place like yours, you know, where I can go out and pick and do that stuff, but um, not in that place. So I have to accept where I am and do the best you can and don't worry about the rest. That's my motto. Do the best you can and don't worry about the rest. Well, I'm, I'm one of the possible drawbacks I see is like you're able to do this long term with store-bought fruit but uh, you know store-bought fruit is not just fruit that you buy in a store it's it's often picked unripe it's often traveled far it sometimes comes from other countries so do you think this could be a factor in why some people don't succeed uh, at a raw vegan diet long term yes and no uh there is a tendency to, to uh, not get as much as you should from your fruit or your, your food completely, your produce. But if you're watching things, I mean, we live in an incredible age, something that never, ever happened for humanity. We can monitor what we take in. You know, we can do things that uh, we have food diaries that tell us what this, what they've taken from store-bought. There's, there's no, there's nothing but store-bought in the science these days where they've taken and they've averaged it out. And they said, this has so much amino acids. This has so much vitamin C, some Bs and 
uh, omega sixes and threes and and minerals and and you can pretty much guess. And then you turn around and you test. Yes, it is a snapshot. It is a little picture of what's going on, but deficiencies show up if they're there every time. Sure, sure. And uh, so, so tell us about this. You know, you know a lot of people that have been eating a raw vegan diet. Some have succeeded, but you and I know some people that that haven't been successful. Some of you, some of them, I know more than one person, several people that have died and they were claiming to be on a raw vegan diet, some of them fruitarian. You know, if this diet is so good, and I know there are many other factors of health that, that determine our, our overall condition, but why could somebody eat on such a great diet and you don't see long-term raw food is out there today? I mean, I see, I know, I know one or two, and you might have heard of history of three or four, at least for me, maybe you see more than I, but how come there are, I mean, the average person that eats a standard American diet is, seems to be living or outliving the, the people that so-called eating this uh, raw food diet or is, is, are you seeing this as well? And if so, why do you think that is? Uh, number one, I think we have in recent history, more people doing raw food. Uh, I mean, you can go back to the twenties and, and Germany and they were doing raw food group and back in the 1800s there were a couple instances where there was a raw food group here and there but i think we're, we're seeing more people uh that are doing raw food and so you're going to see more fail another thing about history is we've never ever had chemicals in our food like we do now. You know, in the 50s, started making things were processed. Twinkies came out, TV dinners came out. Oh, it's easy now. Hmm. But there's a price to pay. There's always consequences. And what I see is that I'm not so sure I, I see the, the people dying, but I do see people failing. And again and again, it, it's, it's not about what they're doing right now, but the damage that was caused before this all when they started doing raw. And a lot of times the raw diet is actually blamed for their history. And, you know, you know people with, with uh, IBD, irritable bowel uh, disease. And what starts that and causes problems, they may still have a problem after transitioning into a raw diet. They may still have a problem, but they would have more of a problem if they weren't on it. So it, it's, it's all relative and there is no perfect. There is no, I'm gonna have nature change everything around for me. It's, you do the best and it, it's amazing what it does do for you, but there's no guarantees. Uh, I've known, no, in fact, I had a guy that I worked with who had cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And he'd gone through chemo and radiation and everything. And he was, he was on his deathbed. But he started to give a raw diet and fasting a chance. And after he passed away, his wife came up to me and said, thank you, because you gave him a life, a dignity to die with. 
before he was on so many drugs, he didn't know which way was up. But when he, when he did die, he was able to talk to his kids, to his family, and say goodbye properly, and give them love. It made a whole difference in his life. So did it cure his cancer? No. But it gives a better life. That's that's a beauty of, of what we give. Sure. So I, I there are a lot of people that look at uh, the, the average status quo of the world today in terms of the physical appearance, and somebody who's overweight is normal and somebody who's not overweight might be considered too skinny or something yeah yeah and, and I, I exercise all the time i go to the gym all the time i think it's uh, important to success on a uh, vegetarian diet is to keep fit and but i know a lot of people don't do that but a lot of people think that are not vegan or vegetarian they think you cannot be fit on a raw vegan diet for, for the i mean we know rock we know the the all the the big industry out there, how they want people to think you need milk and meat to be healthy and so on. We, we know the brainwashing that's been done to many people over their lives. Uh, for me, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm super, super into modesty for, uh, for reasons. And uh, so I don't walk around with a shirt off showing everybody, look, I'm raw and I have muscles and all this stuff, but I, but I do. And uh, can you talk about this? Because you, have always been, even in the picture that I had in a book here, and even now, uh, you have the muscles of a fit man. And the, people wouldn't think that's possible unless they saw it, you know? And, and, and even if they see it, they try to make excuses. Like I'm sure some people might yeah. see you and say, oh, you're lying, you're not vegan, you must be eating meat on the side or something, because they just, it's hard for oh, them they, to they, they come up with a hundred theories, you know, how, how I'm making it. Um, but yeah, it's, um, I put it, that, you're 32 years raw vegan, you said? 32 raw vegan. 32 raw vegan. Go like this. <laughs> Look at this, folks. 32 years raw vegan. And, yeah. uh, you almost know. Almost 62. Yeah, and almost 62. And so don't tell me that you can't build muscle when you're exactly. over. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, I don't know what, why people just, uh, they just don't get it that, you know, the, the strongest animals in the world are pretty much vegan animals. I was just going to go there. Uh, yeah. And, and the, the elephant is vegan. The gorilla is vegan. Uh, you're, you're, most of your primates are vegan. Okay. We, we, we have this little thing about, oh, we've seen chimpanzees eat meat. Yeah, and you're not looking at a whole picture there. Uh, there's uh, a thing about encroachment. This is my area, and it can be, you know, like the Native Americans uh, have been, no, I'm not going to go there. Um, the Native Americans had situations where, where they would do things that, weren't natural, but most of the time your, your primates, uh, for, for sure your gorilla, um, and they're not too far away from us genetically. Uh, but, you know, if you want to talk about really close to uh, genetics, you talk about the bonobo. What do they do all day? They exercise all day and they eat all day and then in the middle of the day, they sleep, and at night, they sleep, and they have their social, and they do all their, their stuff. But they're climbing all the time. Bonobos don't even reach the ground very often. They're just up in, in the top of the trees getting the fruit and the leaves. Yeah, I mean, everybody's talking about, well, you know, bonobos eat fruit. No, 49% of their diet is leaves. So they get their greens too. 
but that, there, there, there is no animal in nature that doesn't move, whether they're vegan or not. But we do see that ones like lions, I mean, they have short spurts and they track down and get their, their prey and then they eat. And what do they do after that? They sleep, they rest, and they rest for days sometimes before the next time. They store up the energy. Where you, you see your vegans, your vegan animals, they're not constantly moving all the time, doing their thing. Yeah. So uh, I think, uh, you know, some of these important things like enough water, enough sleep, enough calories, leaving out the processed food. Uh, these are mistakes that people I think that attempt a vegan or raw diet uh, make and they run into these issues with doing it. And then they say, oh, it didn't work for me, but they don't realize that they weren't working on these other issues that, or other things that are, no matter what you, how you're gonna live, these are the important keys of health. Yeah. Would you agree or not? When we talk about vegans, uh, there's a lot of people who really don't want to talk about vegans. Um, a lot of doctors, they talk about plant-based diets or something. I, I go for a uh, plant-exclusive diet or way to eat, but a lot of the vegans that I've, I've seen throughout the years Say, oh yeah, I eat whole food, but I also have my vegan turkey and my vegan bacon and my my vegan yogurt and my my vegan soy milk and these are processed foods. And a lot of them have chemicals, even though they have the organic label on them. But yeah, and, and to put this in, I think that organic is really essential. Uh, the chemicals in our life is really hurting us. Uh, from the pesticides on the food to the, the cleaning products in your house. Those, those things are, you, you talk about one thing that, that really can hurt somebody going raw and causing a fail is the chemicals. I don't know how many times when I've been on the road lecturing that I stay at other people's houses because they, you know, they, they say, hey, can you come here and talk? And you stay at their house and you go into their bathroom and they've got Crest toothpaste and uh, Prell shampoo sitting in the bathroom. And uh, I don't know about you, but I can smell laundry product whenever I go out. People have been using uh, detergents, you know, that they buy off the shelf. It gets to me. I mean, I, do, I make it an effort not to walk down the laundry aisle at the store because it's, it's pretty big. And we don't, we don't make that connection very often. So a lot of times, people who are having problems getting rid of toxins, and I'm talking specifically uh, hepatic biotransformation phase one and phase two, with others unofficially called hepatic detox, isn't working. I see this again and again and again. And it's because of our chemicals are have overloaded the body. So a little bit off the subject. Oh here. no, you're hundred percent right. It's, you know, the chemicals in the food, the chemicals in the clothing and it's their environment. The environmental toxins have a tremendous impact on our health. Absolutely right. Uh, what about, uh, what we were talking about, did you see the movie, The Game Changers? Yes. 
What was your uh, overall assessment of that? Uh, it's been a while, <laughs> um, but uh, I liked it. Um, I think they presented some people uh, that weren't quite the vegan, but that's okay. You know, what they're trying to present is that eating a plant-based diet does something really good and that you can gain muscle and be fit. Now, are you going to be the bodybuilder uh, on a raw food diet? Maybe not, but will you be fit? I think you, it, it, that's not a hard thing to do. It is, it, it is it's work, but it, really isn't impossible uh, I see a lot of people who want to be bodybuilder style you know they want they want to be the heavyweight bodybuilders they want to be the big guys you know with uh, 18 inch biceps well if you take a look at these guys, um, they're doing a whole lot more than what is healthy. And I'm not going to get into their, their drug use, but I will talk about their protein. They want too much protein. And what happens is that excessive protein becomes inflammatory. And so the muscles are inflamed and so they're bigger. But you know what? They're not necessarily stronger. Now, I don't go to a gym anymore. I have one sitting in my house. Uh, I don't like taking the time to, to go there and get around waiting for somebody else to use a, a machine or something. So I have one at home. But when I did go, uh, I went to a gold gym to flash a name. Uh, and I was there, and of course, Gold's Gym is known for big bodybuilders. And I was doing a, a PEC fly machine when I was there. Another guy walked up and says, can I break in on you? I said, absolutely, come on. And so he, he went down, and he was a big guy. I mean, he was huge. And he, he went to go change the weights and he looked. He says, oh my, you do the same weights as the big boys. I went, okay. Um, he goes, he did go up one 10 pound weight on the machine. And this was a guy uh, twice my size but he would, he kept looking at me, he goes, how, and it, it, after he did his set, I came back and did my set, and he says, how do you do that? It's like, you don't have any muscle, but you're still, no, my muscle is not inflamed. I have good, strong muscle, and it doesn't take size to do it. So what do I do? I, I propose that I do functionally fit. I don't have to be the strongest guy, but I can do everything I want to do when I'm not working out. You know, when you need to lift something hard and heavy, I have no chance, no problem saying, let's do it. Whereas I know some other people my age, who goes, we need to do something else. We need to find somebody to come in and do this. We need, no, I'm sorry, I'm doing it. I'm functional. So. Okay. So uh, I don't want to uh, give anyone a delusional idea that they, they, they can't do this, but uh, do you think, I mean, I know you tell people uh, to get as much raw as possible, but somebody that's not willing for whatever reason to give up meat, do you think they can do small amounts of, uh, 
animal meat and just avoid the processed food and still be healthy and recover from disease? Or you think that it's essential that they give up all animals? Good question. Um, there are some plant-based doctors who say, well, if you, if you can't give up meat, if you do this a little bit. But the research is, shows that there's problems with just a, two ounces a week of red meat. Two ounces a week. Uh, there's hormonal issues. There, uh, there's chemical issues. There's uh, things that are in the meat that just don't work. And do you want complete recovery? Do you want to really make a difference in your health? Then give it up. We have an addiction. We have, well, we, I have to have this. I have to have this for protein. No, you don't. Go get some lettuce. Romaine lettuce, great amount of protein. If you want more kale, you know, okay. Um, but if you want even more, okay, sprout some, some legumes. But this, this thing about needing meat is a thought. And thought is the always the basis of an addiction. I, if, if you say, oh, I, I, I want this, it's a thought first before you grab it. It's always a thought. So thoughts are our addiction. And so you have to change your thought. And changing the thought can change everything. Okay. Uh, I met you over 30 years ago. And I'll never forget one of the, in the first week I met you, I first saw you on South Beach and we spoke. And I was, when I was leaving Florida to go through the airport, I stopped in a health food store you were working at. And uh -huh. you had just broken your tooth on a date pit. Uh, oh really? That was, that was I don't even remember that. Yeah, it was a long <laughs> time do. ago, and it may. And so I remember that. So uh, over the years, have you or anyone you know raw vegan? You know, it's it's a question: Is it can you develop teeth problems more on a vegan diet or a raw food diet than not? Uh, how have your teeth been over the years? And and what do you recommend people that have whether it's a misunfortunate accident of a tooth issue or just a tooth issue in general? Do you, are you completely against things like root canals and, and what do you do? No tooth or do you say get a uh, implant instead? What's your opinion about dental dental issues? That could go a long ways, guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I had a lot of issues before I was raw. I wish I could show you the picture. Uh, I don't have it available right now. Because uh, I wanted, I wanted no amalgams in my mouth, and I'm talking about this happening back in the '80s, and so doing filling cavities without amalgams was kind of a new thing, and the guy that I went to. Uh, a dentist said, well, then we're going to have to put in some uh, some studs to hold the composite in. And he drilled between three teeth, from one tooth into another tooth, and that same tooth into another tooth. Um, those teeth didn't last very long. There's a lot of people saying that fruit, people eat a lot of fruit, have a sugar issue uh, with their teeth. Science says no. One of the things is that causes cavities is food stickiness, things that stick around for a long time. The doctors actually took, scientists actually took and looked at what hangs around in the, the, the mouth 
and they found that bananas and apples didn't even stick around long, long enough for them to find on the tooth. <coughs> Excuse me. Whereas meat and dairy, cheese specifically, stayed around forever. So is it the dental issue something about what we're eating? Uh, by the way, processed foods, terrible. Uh, I think some of the problems that we have um, as vegans is a tendency uh, that our magnesium is so very high and yet our calcium uh, is much lower. Uh, whether it, it's the Clapper study or uh, other studies that have shown that vegans are generally a little bit low in calcium. It's because they're not getting enough greens. But uh, you find that a magnesium calcium ratio is way off. And a higher magnesium allows for the bacteria to get into the teeth much easier. So the magnesium calcium ratio is something to be watched. Uh, other things, you know, about the sugar, uh, sugar and fruit, just don't ever pan out. There's somebody's theories. And if you look at the science, I have a article on my website. Okay, my, my website is brand new. Uh, it's only got two articles and I want over a hundred on there. So I'm working on it. But one of the articles I do have on there is called fruit phobia. And it takes the science and shows you what the sugar we actually do. And, and one of the, the main points of the, the article is about teeth. So if you want to know more, there you, you, I, you can get it there. Um, implants and stuff like that. Uh, once you get into a dentist chair, you're stuck. You're going to go back and you're going to go back. They tell you that implants are just as good as your, your own teeth. I'm sorry. It's a foreign object and the body may not allow it to have to, to be there functionally. Uh, but the average implant only lasts 10 years. That's the average. Some may last longer, but some even shorter. Uh, the uh, drilling into a tooth and putting in chemicals and killing the nerve and making it all sanitary, the body will eventually reject because it's not a living part of the body anymore. So these things don't actually work, but sometimes you have to do something. Uh, so I usually end up not judging, but I'll tell you one thing, don't get amalgams. Silver amalgams, which have high mercury, are probably the worst thing. I, I've actually seen people with MS where the amalgams actually brought on the MS. Whether it was coming up anyway, who knows? But as soon as they got amalgams in their mouth, and I'm, we're talking teenagers here, okay? MS can start as, in a teenage year, multiple sclerosis. And the amalgams are, are something that's really, really, really bad. Do we have something great in dentistry? Yeah. Uh, it helps us keep teeth that we would lose otherwise. But they know what's good for business. And so once you get in a dance chair, you will be going back, I guarantee it. Hey, that's a good warning to people. And uh, definitely check out Tim's articles on his website. And I know he's going to be uploading more. 
Uh, so continue to go back there and check there. And uh, there's so much great information and knowledge you have, Tim, and it's so great to see you after all these years. Now, you said what you do is uh, not is what what you do is you a lot of people that doctors had given up on or people had given up on doctors. Somehow, some way they end up finding you and you help people with their health challenges to uh, teach them how to overcome them. Uh, is that is that a good way to? That's a good story, yeah. Do? Okay. Yeah, mostly before now, uh, I, I've been, my business has been primarily referral. Okay. So if i if, if people are, if health experts are saying, I can't help you, but he can, I, maybe I'm doing the right thing. Sure. Sure. And do you work just online or do you work with people, uh, in person or both? Uh, I've gone to pretty much online. Uh, because that way I don't have to pay rent for uh, an office. <laughs> um, and I'm a one man show. I do it all. So, so if I'm, if I'm having to talk to you and organize that, I do that as well as take care of things. But when I do take People, I, I work with health partners. I don't work with patients. I don't work with, with uh, customers or anything. I work with health partners. We become partners in this. I don't tell you what to do. I make suggestions, yes, for sure. But we go through things like pretty much, I don't really get very far into working with somebody without doing extensive testing. And then I share the test results with them. I don't just tell them. We, we go over it piece by piece and it's like, look, your magnesium is down or your, um, your DHA is down or your, this metabolite is, is going on and, and you're not getting your glutathione we can go through all this stuff and they make the decision for themselves. And so I'm not telling them what to do, but we work it out together. What works for them because they can't do any more than what works for them. Sure. So tell everybody your website and how people can contact you. Um, Recoverhealth.info recoverhealth.info. And I'm also on Facebook and Instagram. Under your name? Dr. Tim Trader. Dr. Tim Trader, okay, great. And uh, so is uh, there a phone number on your website or do you do mostly through email? I don't do phone, uh, I do email uh, because okay. it, it I, I usually answer emails within 24 to 48 hours and try to, to be very responsible to that. But a lot of people, if I'm working with somebody in India or somebody in uh, Australia, it's really hard to coordinate time with just calling up and saying, hey, can I get an appointment with you? Yeah. Uh, so it's a lot easier to do just by email. Okay. Well, that's wonderful. So in closing, uh, is there anything else you want to share with uh, my viewers about anything we discussed or anything we didn't discuss? Do you, do you have a desire to talk about before we end here today? Um, I think we, we covered quite a bit of area here, don't you think? I think we did, and there's always so much more, and uh, I would love to do a follow-up with you, and I want to encourage everyone to uh, put your comments and questions below this video and uh, we'll, somehow, some way, we'll do another video or something to get the answers to those. And uh, I'm really excited you were here to join us. It went from here. I've known you a long time and it's so good to catch up with you. And this is the book, The Raw Life, where there's the interviews with all these long-term raw fooders. And Dr. Tim is uh, one of the people that have been doing this and he's still around and thriving. So he knows he's doing something right. You know, it's, it's wonderful. And uh, 
Thank Tim, you. thank you so much, man. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, everybody, remember uh, his contact information below uh, the video in the description and, and check him out and put your comments and questions below. Have a great day, everybody, and thank you. Nature's wealth, good for your health. This is the Raw Life Health Show. Raw Life, brighten up your life.